Did I forget something? I'm not sure. Okay, so today we have a Nissan Versa. Uh, I'm actually really excited to do this one today. Normally, I wouldn't be, but we have rear, sorry, those are front. We have rear quarters, we have front quarters, and they're not always super fun to do. On the Versa, it's not the worst, but they are those like gasket style quarter windows. Uh, we're gonna be doing the full thing in ceramic, um, but we have a plotter now. So, if there's one thing people have been telling me to try the plotter on, it's quarter windows. So, we have, uh, we're gonna be doing 50% on the windshield, we're gonna be doing 20% on the rest of it, uh, full car, and we're gonna be plotter cutting those quarter windows, so hopefully that will mean uh, we'll have a much easier time uh, trying to get those, trying to get those lined up. Um, for those of you who are very unfamiliar with plotters, uh, stay tuned because this is going to get fun. You're going to see some of the good, some of the bad, and uh, I haven't really used this for any cars yet. <laughs> but we're going to pull up the uh, the software here in a little bit, and um, and then have some fun with that. So. Because I have, I'm using ceramic, we set this up for Pro Classic yesterday, so there's probably gonna be a couple little pressure settings I have to change. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be interesting. Uh, I have two front windows on a GMC 2500 on Friday. Any suggestions? Uh, what year? Now you have a plotter. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for sure. Uh, we're gonna be using film cut. So something I'm very unfamiliar with. It's pretty bare bones basic though. I hear they're adding a handful of like pretty what I would consider pretty necessary things soon. Um, I'm surprised to see it <laughs> as basic as it is, honestly. Um, but what matters is the patterns. So let me show you guys really quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I move this, let's throw this window over here. I need a faster way to do this. So this, so this is our software. This is film cut. So we need a tint. We need, uh, what is this? Oh shoot, do I gotta keep track of years? This is a pretty new one. 21, 22, I'm assuming, Nissan Versa. Hey, there it is. Look at that. So then you click on Nest, and you can see everything, uh, everything that it has available. So these are those front quarters. Um, sorry, I'm blocking some of this right here. Ooh. I just tried the Tint Studio code. Tried to try Tint Studio or hit them up in chat because I told them to do a couple of variations on it for that reason. Try, Detroit Tint Studio should work for sure. I told them to put in Tint Studio and some other stuff. Looks like they didn't listen. Um, width. Uh, so this we're gonna do in a 36. So it didn't remember from the last time that we loaded up the software how wide, but that's really quick to change. Um, hopefully it remembers that in the future. Front door fixed. Front door left fixed. So why would they have ones that are fixed and then, oh, maybe it's just a tag to let you know that they are fixed. But that's interesting. I've never seen that before. Looks just like DG. I've never used DG. I haven't, so I've used uh, film and vinyl. I've used Tint Tech. I've used Expel. I've used True Cut. And there's one more in the Tint Tech 2020. I've used all of those. So I am unfamiliar with this one, but I can tell you this thing is, I'm not gonna, like there's a ton of features that I never used in any of those softwares. So the main thing is like, Manipulating patterns, moving things around, um, being able to rotate, which is good, 
and and I don't know. Somehow we were able to move these individually yesterday. So I'm gonna like one thing. I oh there. See, I don't I don't know why now I can move them out all differently. But that's kind of the idea. What's cool? What's cool is. Uh, is I'm completely unfamiliar with this. So I'm going to kind of learn this as I go, which is a lot of what a lot of other people would, would end up doing too as well. Um, you guys would have no idea if you've never touched this stuff before. So I've messed around with those softwares, so I kind of know what software is generally like and, and what to expect from plotters. Um, so I'm hoping these are just some more refined patterns, so we'll see. Uh, alt, I know, I learned yesterday, alt and arrow keys um, can rotate. And also, if you click and hold and then scroll wheel, yeah, that'll rotate as well. What I was trying to figure out was, like, why are some of them connected together and why are some of them not? Or, like, okay, so we have it as a group, right? But then I'm somehow... I can then put them individually. It looks like it has to do with clicking on the edges. Is alt? How do I group them again, though? Anyways, we'll figure all that out. What I'm more concerned of right now is uh, doing doing the cuts like this. So this is totally fine for these front quarters. Um, what I'm gonna do then is I have to adjust my plotter. Uh, we're really only going to worry about the quarter windows, though, so I don't need all that. Anyways, so let's go ahead and get this prepped, and then we're going to throw some film. I don't know. We might hand cut some first, then leave it up to the quarters later on, get some stuff out of the way. I think that's probably the smarter way to go. But I like this, because I get so many questions about it. So let's see how this is going to fit in or not fit in. Here, let's make this bigger. Then I got a bigger preview window there. And then, I don't know, I guess I have more real estate here. And then I, I can have my control window. Eh. I'm not sure. OK, anyways, I'll figure this out. I just did an 18 Versa scan sedan quarter patterns were spot on. Ooh, with this, with this software? Really? That's exciting. That's what I want to hear. Because that's just it. I don't, I don't care about all the extra little features. The main thing, what are you going to be doing? You're not going to be resizing them if the patterns work. You're going to want that a little bit. But like, so tint tech, you could make them overall just a little bigger, a little smaller. You could do more stuff than that. But that was one of the main things uh, that you would do in tint tech um, or any other software. You know, if they're just a smidge small, um, it still sucks when that happens. But that was something that you would definitely want. Um, in this software, it doesn't look like there's any of that. So to not even see that, is a little bit annoying. DG cut looks the same. <laughs> I've never messed with it though. So I'm only going to be able to speak for this one right here. Could be. Um, oh, dudes, I'm just, like, these are kind of like, <laughs> these are, I, these are for kids, right? Dude, I got, get costco size packs of those applesauces. They're the easiest way ever to eat applesauce. <laughs> just saying the patterns are more than likely the same? Yeah, could be. Uh, but, so if they're good, that means good things. What's the size? Um, 
it's a 50. It's a 50 inch plotter actually. They said 53. So basically you can accept 40 inch rolls or a little bit larger, um, but not all the way up to 60. So I, that's, that's my sweet spot right there. Kind of like a three gallon keg. Um, I don't want a 60 inch plotter. There's so much extra plotter sitting around that I'm never going to use. Um, but it, it'll cover 99% of my jobs here. So if we get a Model 3, we're not going to be cutting the back window on it. Um, and certain maybe windshields, but yeah. Yeah, it's uh, plenty, plenty for what I need and plenty for what most people need. I didn't really understand people picking up plotters for like just the doors. I hear that's, that's kind of a thing too. Like they'll get like a 20 inch something plotter and you can't do back windows out of it. I would definitely spring for something a little bit bigger where you could because if you're already gonna be spending a fair amount, I mean, that guy right there is what? It's only 1600, which as far as plotters go, that's really not pricey. Have you ever, have you ever reverse weeded, reverse weeded the plotter pattern? See, now we're getting into all types of stuff that I don't know. I'm not sure what reverse weeding really even means. If you want to make a post in my group, and then like with a short video of it, I'd really like to see that. It kind of like strikes me as reverse rolling. It's like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> no, I have no idea. But if there's better ways to weed patterns, I'm all for it. I was sent a video yesterday of a slightly different way to do it. I got a 53 inch Titan II. You can always do vinyl signage, lettering, decals. Yes, yes, all that stuff is an option. So one thing I'm really, okay, guys, I'm really excited to, to be able to do this uh, soon. Um, I have a small graphics project for a YouTube video that I'm gonna do. Um, I'm really excited about that because um, now I've got a plot, like the only thing that was keeping me from doing it was a plotter. So now I have that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing some type of like window tint graphics video. Not, not a tutorial or anything, just having some fun with it, but I think it's got really, really good potential. So, but yeah, overall, let's see, when it was the last time? Let's see, I'm trying, I'm trying to think, it wasn't that long ago since I haven't used a plotter. It's funny to see somebody so against plotters finally come around. <laughs> so I know I know there's gonna probably need to be some some more clarification uh, for like, hey, you've been dogging on plotters for so long, now you have one. What the hell? So I've just I've been very jaded by patterns. So I always just say plotters in general because. Things that really drive me crazy about them is just, you, you're you gonna see. We adjust the plotter, we cut, we, like, we, you print it out, then you take it over to the board, you cut, you shrink it, um, and then you install it, and then you find out if they work or they don't. So when you're only doing a couple of cars in a day, you don't really need one. So there's a lot of cars for you where you're just not going to see me ever use it. It's going to be sitting in the corner and I'm not going to touch it. Daniel Rayner super chatted $19.99. Daniel Rayner! How many cars did we do with new plotter this morning? Must master Matt. Mr. Texaby. <laughs> Daniel Rayner with the 20. Thank you. How many plotters or how many cars did you do with the plotter this morning dude i knocked out a hundred cars this morning because no i didn't do i didn't do jack shit this morning <laughs> see that's just it it's it's not like it's gonna turn me into a window tinting machine i'm gonna be using it more as a 
as a cut assistant um, for certain windows than anything. What are you putting tape on the windows for? I don't even know if I need to do it on the bottom edge here. Um, so even though they're rubber gaskets, it's something we've been doing a lot for, for a few months now. Um, it just keeps your edges that much cleaner. So any dirt that's already sitting there is kind of just locked away and it's never gonna bother you. Definitely don't have to do it, uh, but it's really helpful. It's really helpful um, when you get into cars that are just a little bit older. Cars that have been driven around for a handful of miles or whatever. So I'm like, I wanna test cut a couple of patterns, but we're gonna be doing ceramic on this one, so I don't really wanna just do plotted, some plotted patterns and then re-hand cut them. I'm on the fence. So for the quarter windows, definitely. For the rest of the doors, we might wait for another car to do that with. Um, so this is gonna kind of fit in like, so what's, what, what would you really notice? Um, I would still hand cut a top edge. I might cut out the doors in general and then hand cut the top edge. I feel like that would be better, but then if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just hand cut the whole thing. Um, Back windows, quarter windows, those could be plotted more often than not, um, especially quarter windows like these. And then when we're talking about full windshields, those are always gonna be hand cut too anyways. So, windshields historically with any software that I've used have not been very good at all. They're, and that's a big piece and a lot of time and potential damage um, if you want to like, <laughs> you know, clean the whole inside of the glass, spray water, um, and then test fit your pattern and then find out it's short and then rip it off and have to do it all again. It's just extra unnecessary water. So if all it's doing is saving you some cut time, sometimes on, on a piece like that, you're going to want to be extra sure it's going to fit. I have to change my blade depth between C2 and ceramic. Makes total sense. So the ceramic, if you're using Pro Nano, uh, it's a two mil thick film. So it makes total sense that you have to change it. Uh, that's usually what you have to do with, like sometimes you can get, uh, find a sweet spot for all the films that you have and kind of like never have to change the blade or make an adjustment. For the films that we have, I'm assuming we're gonna have to up the pressure, maybe put out a little bit more blade. I'm not entirely sure, but I absolutely want to get probably about three or four blade holders and then just have them with little labels on them and drop them in when I go to change it. Hopefully keep the same settings and then just change out the blade, but I don't know. With the more expensive plotters, you can have presets too. So. You should be able to get away with uh, Canon. You should be able to get away with uh, changing the pressure instead of adjusting the blade. I hope so. I appreciate that. LKB Python LKB. super chatted five dollars. Been a minute for sure. So apple juice or orange juice? He said blade depth. <laughs> Wait, really? So you have to put out more blade instead? Sorry, the chat's just going crazy right now, so it's hard to keep up with. Uh, LKB, thank you for the five. I really appreciate that. Where is? Oh, what? Hey. Okay, one of them's not working now. That 
That's never happened before. They usually work together. Maybe I'm out of fluid. I don't know, but thank you. Um, apple juice or orange juice? Orange juice for sure. I'd say I'll take apple cider over apple juice as well. Apple juice hasn't ever been a super favorite of mine. OJ for sure. I've never been able to get away with just changing pressure, but that's me. Oh, oh, well, that's no fun. Because if you're if you're adjusting the actual blade itself, it just gets annoying. Like, mm, I don't like like pushing some buttons. Sure, adjusting the blade. No, because you always have to try and adjust it back. You might as well just get extra blade holders. It's, it'd be really really, it'd make a lot more sense for me to do, especially if you can keep the same settings and then just swap those out, then you're kind of done with it. All right, so uh, we're gonna be doing Pro Nano 20 on most of this car, so I know you guys are all uh, excited to see some plotter action, so the very first thing we're gonna do is uh, not use this one because this one's empty. Um, the very first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna hand cut. <laughs> we're gonna get to cutting out some quarter windows a little bit later, but I wanna hand cut some doors first uh, because <laughs> one of the many questions that I kept getting yesterday when we were setting up was, does this mean you're not gonna be hand cutting? Oh my God. We still have the back window and the windshield to prep as well. So yeah, we are. We're definitely gonna be a little bit behind today, but we got plenty of time to do this, so. What time is it? Yep. I had a Tesla, Tesla Model S yesterday, a lot of dust on the back doors. Um, they're frameless. So Model S is pretty straightforward as far as a, one of the Teslas go. Um, best I can tell you is just need to redo it in practice. I mean, because if your front doors turned out great, it'll be the same process for the back doors. Um, what I did to adjust it to where it cuts the thicker film as opposed to thinner, and then using thinner material, just lower the pressure. What I did is adjust it to where it cuts the thicker film. Oh, oh, I get, I get what you're saying. So you set it up initially to cut a thicker film and then you lower the pressure when you're cutting the thinner films so then there's less modifying and like you just push some buttons. Ooh, that is a pro tip right there. I'm gonna try that. What are you drinking now? Coffee, lots of coffee, coffee every day. Oh man, see these gasket style ones, oh, I'll be so happy just to plot them and if that works for me, I'll be a happy camper. But if it doesn't, you guys will never hear the end of it. <laughs> we were just going through um, a general setup yesterday so Pro Classic is still not the thinnest of films, but it's definitely thinner than the Pro Nano. So <laughs> my main concern was really getting that sucker just to cut. Um, and if I was gonna waste any material, it was gonna be one of my less expensive ones. But we got it pretty well tuned for that. So now it would be much easier to just make a couple adjustments for uh, the ceramic, but I like what you said about having to back off the pressure a little bit and then it's better at cutting out the thinner films. Because, I don't know, how much, we didn't scrap that much film yesterday, but we probably scrapped a good like, I don't know, 15, 15 or 20 feet of film yesterday. Think of the potential, the potential lost revenue. 
Oh, that's the worst. I hate thinking about that number. When you have a set of doors and like you mess up both the patterns, it's like, oh, it was just whatever in film. But then if you start thinking about like, oh, you know, it's two doors and I charge X amount per doors and so that's potential lost revenue off of that film. <laughs> Not super fun to think about. I like when they use scotch tape instead of duct tape or something else because it, if it's new, it peels really clean. Just sometimes will tear. But man, if they leave this stuff to bake on, uh, it does not want to come off. I used like four feet to dial mine in. Well, good for you. I used two inches to dial mine in. <laughs> uh, instead of cutting out full patterns, just like one inch rectangles. Mm, that, so interesting thing about this one, those little triangles, the test things was not enough to dial in the plotter. Um, it was working fine for all the little test cuts, but then when you start cutting out bigger uh, pieces, sorry, I'm losing my mind here. When you, when you start cutting out bigger pieces, uh, this plotter had a weird quirk where the left side was, was cutting well and the right side was not. Um, so you would think it'd be the cut strip or something like that. Well, <laughs> this is one of those features that I want to see them implement very soon. I've been told they're working on it, um, and it, it is on the list. Um, it cut, it's a continuous cut all the way around. So as it's pushing the material, it's cutting. As it's pulling the material, it's cutting. Um, it works better when it's pulling and cut. And I, most of the plotters, I didn't even think of this, they're... they're the ones that I've used have typically been set up to only cut when it's been pulling. Um, and that would have fixed the issue right away, but I have no ability to enable that as a feature yet. So I had to tweak it even further to get it to cut as a continuous cut, which saves a little bit of time, but more consistency on pull. You should be able to set up in the software the cut direction, not film cut. It's not there yet. Sorry, I think I said funny thing about the plotter. Funny thing about that software. It's at this interesting point where it's pretty, I don't know. If, if the patterns are good, all it is is adding some features and it'll, it'll weigh take off. Um, but it's, it's at this interesting point right now where if you used other software and you looked at this one, you'd go, why is it missing so many things? It's so, it's so like simple and basic and whatever. It's got some of the main things, but um, another thing is it doesn't really have any offsets um, or, sorry, I don't remember the exact term for it, but when you um, cut a pattern, uh, sometimes afterwards you can tell it to spit out like two inches after, after the fact, so you can get it to line up with a certain section of the plotter, so when you're just cutting it off with a blade, it'll, it'll just like spit out like a margin or something. That It doesn't have that. I'll show you the settings. It's so, it's so bare bones <laughs> and just like, wow, pretty lame. Uh, Heather pressure around 90 to 100 plus, get it to where it cuts between 45 to 70. This one is, is post feed, that's the, thank you. Um, this one, I don't know, what do we, it didn't remember my settings from last time, so I have to change it again, but it was like somewhere in the, like 50, like mid 50s. I took a picture of it though, so I had to remember. But there's quite a few, quite a few little differences here between a graph tech and this workhorse thing. Um, some quality of life, um, some quality of life settings that just don't exist on this. So it doesn't have the little like air suction thing. 
Um, it doesn't have the cross cut, which honestly never really worked anyways, so I don't, I don't miss cross cut. Um, the rollers aren't as smooth. The, there's, there's quite a few little things on this thing. Um, the, everything kind of feels a little mm, chintzy. <laughs> Just not not quite as nice. But it managed to cut out some patterns, so that's good. So that's that's the goal. Is if it can do that, then uh, then we're off to the races. So I'm really interested to like follow the updates as they come out because it like when I first started using like tint tech, which is why I'm kind of surprised that some of these features just don't exist. Um, it's like, like they're first coming out with a, like it's like a brand new type software. At least that's what it looks like. So maybe they were just working on patterns for a very long time and then decided like, oh, hey, maybe we need some features on the software. <laughs> I'm not super picky. We don't need a ton for window tinning. But yeah, in a little bit, I'll show you. There's just, there's nothing there. You go, go into settings and there's no settings and you're like, wait, what? This thing shut off already. I got so much room to play around on the inside of this. This is a great Great, easy car all the way around. A little bit high. There we go. Let's use some of that space. Getting it set up for vinyl is much easier. Doesn't have to be as precise. Yeah, that's what they're for, really. Vinyl, vinyl, you can cut with so many more different, cheaper machines, because you have that whole backing paper. So the problem with uh, window tint, much thinner, and you're basically cutting against a thin plastic backing sheet, which is just not very strong. So that's why most of these things, like, you know, you have things the way they were for years, just plotters where they're either expensive or they're kind of chintzy and cheap. They've, they've had a lot of time to grow, um, so some of those things can be done on cheaper machines now. But it's one of those things where you're not just going to go out and buy you know, a $1,500 plotter just to see if it's okay for window tinting more often than not. There's just, it's just, it's a big item, it's more expensive, kinda wanna get something that you know is gonna work uh, for what you need it to. So people don't just generally try this stuff very often. So, but with these ones, they've been around long enough where people have actually been testing them out and stuff, so they're supposed to work well enough. And if that's the case, that's what we'll do. But we're still, we're still gonna hand cut. Everybody's gonna see the plotter over there and be like, why are you using it? We'll get there. Does it have a servo motor? Um, it's the workhorse from Plotter Depot. I forgot what it said. It's really quiet though. It's really quiet and really smooth. So 
That was one of the listed things. I forgot what motor, but it is on uh, Plotter Depot. You can check it out. What is it? I, I have a link. Plotter software? Yeah, that one. So that'll bring you to the website. Identical to the Titan II, which works awesome. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, the ones that I, I knew were like GraphTech, Vinyl Express, and I definitely know of like some of the other ones, like Mamaki, Roland, but I've never played around with them. Just everybody in my area, if they've gotten one, it's been Vinyl Express uh, or, or GraphTech, which are basically the exact same thing, as far as I can tell. It's a servo? Okay, cool. Now, for 1600, I would still you can you can look around. You might be able to find like I was able to buy a vinyl express plotter for like 2 grand uh used. It was on a lease trade in. Um, but they're they can be hard to come by. You kind of just have to be looking in the background um, at like local classifieds, and then sometimes you can just pick one up where somebody's not using it anymore, or like the guy I bought it from a long time ago, he uh, bought, he had to buy both machines on a discount, um, and then he immediately flipped the, the plotter. He just wanted like the printer he bought along with it. So he sold it for, for two, which was great. So for two grand, you can get into a much better machine. Um, sometimes you can find them for 1500, but they're gonna be used. So if you want a new machine, something like this, um, but I just found out yesterday they have the Workhorse 2. So why on earth I have the Workhorse 1, I don't know. But hey, there we go. I had to make my, uh, my window just a little smaller so it's hard to read. Flex has the Titan II for more than double the price of the U.S. cutter and act like you get a deal and it's actually... <laughs> uh, that's not new. Um... I've been bulk installing PPF for 13 years. I have a 3000 Jag 4. Um, I use it for door cups and personal vinyl projects. Wasn't ever happy with patterns. What software? Welcome to the club. I was never, that, that's why I notoriously don't use software on this channel because I've never been happy with a lot of them. The only one that I was really happy with was uh, Xpel software. I was like, there's hope. I even personally thanked uh, Dean at the tent conference I was like your patterns your patterns are good I appreciate you and then they took that software and then they locked it down to Xpel only and I was like I hate you no I'm just kidding I don't I, I understand but it's like man I can't recommend anything now <laughs> uh, But yeah, I'd love to know what software you were trying. There's people that'll talk about film and vinyl. I didn't, that was like one of my least favorite ones. If the patterns suck, they're no good. They had like this really weird quirk. So like Tint Tech, top edges are sometimes wavy, but more often than not, they're just randomly short somewhere. Like, you, you're going to be installing a door, and then all of a sudden it's going to be, like, a half inch short. And you're just like, why? So on a lot of tint text patterns, if you know that ahead of time, you can just make them overall a little bit bigger. Like, oh, that one needs to be three or four clicks bigger. So you can make those adjustments on stuff like that. So that was helpful, but still kind of a nuisance. Um... Film and Vinyl, uh, when I saw it, they, they had some complaints about their back windows. 
Um, so then they oversized everything by like an inch. And so they just all got way too big. And then for the doors, this was like the weirdest thing. I don't get this. Um, they would flip up. So you'd either have a gap at the bottom or in the center about like a half inch. Like it was bad. And then it would like swoop up to the very ends. It would kind of follow the curve and then just the, the corners would like start to swoop up. So then you'd have to pre-cut those ahead of time. Um, that was super annoying. True cut was pretty good. Computer cut was pretty good. Um, as far as I remember, both of them, both of them had, uh, both of them had company issues. So, kind of like, like Expel was doing. They'd let you like use their software for like a year and not not give you a hard time or anything, and all of a sudden that year would come around, and then you'd have like a rep call you and be like, so uh, we noticed you're not buying our film. And you'd be like, yeah, I'm happy with what I have. And they'd be like, hmm, well, uh, so you have our software. And you're like, yeah, it's great, I'm using it. Well, uh, we, we're gonna have to take that back. Oh. Uh, okay. And then that was it. Like, now, now what do you do? Like, this, if you're happy with the film, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're happy with the film that you're using, the software, ugh, maybe for some people, software is not enough to get me to switch, especially if that means you're always locked in. And along the way, you'd be making, like, small modifications. And then, like, so you'd, you'd invest quite a bit sometimes, like, I remember working with, uh, uh, with a company named Tint Squad, who is owned by, uh, or like associated with Sun Distributing. I don't know, there's some, some weirdness going on there. <laughs> they're like, they're, they're owned by the same family. Um, so, but the, uh, the owner, he, he would sit there and he would modify some patterns and he would get them working better and then he would save them and he had his little database of like saved modified patterns. And then the software company yanks away the software and then it's like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do with the patterns? I don't know, buy our film? <laughs> like, they don't care. So that's why I'm like, you know, when people tell me you can adjust patterns, I, I, they should just work. If you're gonna pay, if you're gonna pay like 150 bucks a month, or whatever, like they should just work with very little modification. I might not buy your film, but I give you $1,500 a year. Haha, <laughs> yes, one big weird family. Yeah, <laughs> I just didn't want to say, I didn't want to say who owned it or didn't own it. It's just like, I know who runs it and what, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what company was that? What software? Uh, I believe it was True Cut and Computer Cut. Computer Cut for sure. Um, I think TrueCut did the same thing. TrueCut was uh, was SunTech. Any any big company with a big ego will will do that. It seems. So you're you're like industry staple brands. I'm surprised there isn't anything to accurately measure and upload. I, I've thought about it. I mean, I, I talked to uh, to some other people about it before too. There might be a way to like have a have like a grid board, take a picture, um, and then just kind of vectorize it, and that might get you like close. But I think you still need that quality control where you're actually cutting them out and fitting them and making small adjustments. So like, if you're just getting mail-in patterns, there's there's no quality control there. So it's uh, it's a little harder to 
kind of manage all that. Ooh, these are like way more rounded than I thought. Look at that. We need to we need to like super round these corners. God, if only we used a blotter ahead of time. Your own, oh, as some distributed thoughts of your own plotter program. <laughs> that is such an undertaking. You know, for as much as, as much crap as I'll give the companies about yanking them back, it is a lot of effort. If you're gonna pull in cars, cut your patterns, quality check them all, it's, it's just gonna be a huge amount of money. Core is supposed to be all tested patterns. That's what they say. I'd give it a try. But again, it's if if you're talking about a one that's only Lumar and you know, like Yeah, if it's only available through through a company like Lumar, well chances are Yeah, remember I said I had to like super round them? Good lord. I mean, they're probably going to do a similar thing. If they see that it's working for one company, uh, then the, and it, it, the, the goal is not to sell you software, though. The goal for them is to get you on their film. So if they can make convenient tools that get you to think differently about their film, like somebody said, I'm paying you $1,500 a year, uh, they'll make way more off of you in film. So they might not even care at all about that 15 if they can make far more off of you to leverage you into using their films. But then there's software development, there's plotter support, there's like, there's a whole bunch of things. This would be a really expensive undertaking. Um, my husband does 3D scanning, so I've asked him about this, but we need to film to go in the seals, and it's the same every single time the patterns come from the scanner. Wouldn't be amazing. There need to be lots of human involvement, arguably too much to make it a benefit. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of like creating your own video game, like your AAA title. It's just there's going to be probably... Millions in just software development and like time and patterns and stuff because you have like an entire you have like an entire database you either what buy or lease somebody's existing database and then add your own patterns as you go or you literally go rent every car that's ever existed and you have somebody cut out patterns and it's just like so you wouldn't even be ready for a number of years until you get that. It's just, it's a, it's a lot. And then all it takes is some cynical tinner like me to cut one out and go, oh, this sucks. <laughs> and then that's it. We're done, see ya. You need a 3D scanner? Maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, when you get to the top edge of a window, and that 3D scanner, like, I, I'm assuming a scanner would do better, right? But there's just a w top edge of a window, an aftermarket one could be wavy, so there's nothing that could be accounted for that. You just get as close as you can. So even at the end of the day, are they, like, there's just no way around it. Hand cutting's always gonna be better, but as long as you could get close enough, um, like I saw x do, um, that, that gave me a lot, of, a lot more confidence in software in general, but it still had its problems. You should plot just one window. 
I will. I'll definitely do that. Um, right now I'm a little behind. So I'm going to mainly do the quarters today and then on another day. Probably like on a pro classic job, we'll switch it up. This is nice. Now we're having a healthy discussion about them. Um, did anyone see the post on Facebook group about a Tinter King of Prius? I did not catch that one. I have my own plotter for 45 years and I can't change it. Loving these streams after removing botched tint job. The better tinner won't guarantee the job because the car was previously tinted. Had to triple check the windows. <laughs> that sucks. Whenever you do a removal and a retint, I mean, chances are something's going to turn out dirtier, but if somebody underprices the retent or the removal anyways, uh, they're less incentivized to, to kind of do a good job. Plotters excel in predictable situations like preloading for a dealer. Yes. So somebody like me, a plotter is never going to quite cut it. Um, it might be pretty close, but what plotters are really good for is for high production. So high production, um, less care. So um, like they said, dealerships. Dealerships are a great example. If you're going to preload uh, the entire dealership, um, rear sections or whatever you're doing, which is, which is a super common thing you're, like, nobody cares. Like, the, the tinter is not trying to appease an individual. They're trying to appease, like, the dealership, and there's just not, not much quality control there. So when somebody new is, like, kind of just looking at the car, they're just uh, assuming whatever on it is mostly good. They might nitpick some of the windows and want something redone, but then that's a situation the dealership is going to take care of after the fact. So somebody's going to go through, they're going to preload everything, and most of it is going to be perfectly fine. But what's perfectly fine for a dealership is probably going to be very unacceptable for me. <laughs> so there's that. I wish... I wish Tint Wiz would get some cool GeoShield spec sheets. I've used the GeoShield, um, for my Tint Wiz proposal, I used the GeoShield, um, they sent me, or on their website too, so they have the display boards. I just send those along with the, uh, with the quote. So it, it wasn't like anything Tint Wiz specific, but they look really good and they give an overview of the film and like some bullet points and stuff. So those are something that you could get today. Um, as far as that goes, though, yeah, I don't know. I haven't asked them about a collab or anything. They have, like, 10, 10 million collabs. <laughs> but, yeah, also uh, on delivery, the thing is, when, when you're working at a place and you're just kind of whipping through cars, you, just, you don't have time to care as much. You do care, or at least a lot of people care, but there's just not enough time in the day to be super critical of everything. So when you cut something and it might be a little short or a little off, the window's getting rolled up, and the customer's not going to see that until much later on. And at that point like they might have not even cared. So that's where, you know, the, the typical lines come out. It's gonna dry, <laughs> give it time, uh, wait a week. It's just the tinner is getting somebody out of their hair for the most part. I mean, those things are true, you have to let it dry, but they'll sometimes pass off too many mistakes on that. <laughs> let it dry, it'll adjust.
see nice top edge. This is hand cut, this isn't plotter cut. I'm just throwing this out there. I don't wanna give that plotter any extra credit right now. We'll try it for the quarters. <laughs> and then we'll try a door later on. The dust will dry out. <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen some, some uh, consumers pop up in the group uh, where they're like, hey, I'm not, like I've waited a little while. The tint shop has told me, you just kind of like brushed me off. Um, they said my, like, I wanted 5%. They said they installed 5% and they said it would get darker. Just wait a little while. And it's like, oh Lord. <laughs> that shop needs to get a meter and then they could actually roll a window down and show somebody. There's something about, there's something about Nissan, Toyota, Lexus, eh, not always Lexus, but like Nissan and Toyota and Honda, sometimes they're glass, it just like the film slides easier on that, where I'll do a, something domestic, and then it just doesn't. Do you recommend using the plotter or hand cutting? <laughs> we're, we're hand cutting. It's, if you want to save some time, plotters will do that. They'll definitely save you time on cutting everything out. But generally, they're not as accurate. So it's up to the quality that you want to provide. Lots of shops get by on plotters. So I definitely want to set it up for the ceramic, but I still have extra, I still have the back windows to cut out. Maybe I could do it for the back window. The back window and all the quarters, I'm not sure. Uh, local to you, just starting out, love what you do, definitely picked up some tips. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. Glad you like the channel. <laughs> Woo, this looks good. I did a set of doors the other day. Probably the best set of doors I ever did. I eyeballed the hell out of them. It was on an aviator. I was just really happy. I need, like that was at the end of last week. I really needed that. <laughs> there was just so many like quarter windows like this and just little things. Like I had the boat, I had two Lexuses, I had that Toyota that just took way longer. Um, and then uh, I had to redo a Kia windshield, which I wasn't super proud of. Um, and then at the, at the end of all of that, I had two doors in ceramic, and it went just super smooth. And I was like, yes, I can do two doors. <laughs> Uh, 
Sometimes you just have those weeks. So I'm hoping this, this goes well. That 18 versus sedan I did didn't have front quarters. Oh, well then, so that would be completely different. Trying to get a hold of Plotter Depot. Try uh, the Detroit Tint Studio code, like just Detroit Tint Studio instead. They told me that was the code, and then I said make some extra ones just in case. The rear quarters looked exactly the same. Oh, well, that's good. They're probably a little different, but as long as they're the gasket style ones, that's, that's really good. Because if they're just like normal ceramic bordered quarters, that would be really, that wouldn't tell you very much. But being gasket style, that's where, uh, that's where things get a lot more difficult. First, it didn't have front quarters until 2020. That is something I would not know. Do you have to fill your tin keg every day? Um, no, you could leave it for a couple of days. If it's, depends on how much soap you use, um, it'll start to separate after like a day. So it'll start to build up on like the sidewalls and stuff, but it'll build up just while it's sitting there anyways. So over time, it's gonna get kind of scuzzy. But if you're in a cooler climate, um, you, it's not gonna be as bad. On hot weather, I would suggest every day cool weather you could get by like every other day you'll you'll notice a difference though a little bit of a difference so i'll leave it sometimes for a day or two depends on how much i have left then when i'm doing ceramic i always change that stuff out Yeah, we pulled these pretty wide, I think, considering how much these corners kind of turn here. But we went back and forth a lot on these corners. Looks like it was pretty far worth it. Just that, that's really close. I like that. Oh, that's weird. Look at this glass. See this little hump here? Yep. Hopefully that matches up on the other side or else we might have to recut that. This little like, yep. They rounded it down a little bit too much in the middle. Still better than Tesla glass. <laughs> Man. But I, I don't think, I'm trying to think of a company of more, I don't think I've seen a more notable company fail forward so hard. They just, they have built such a cult following so early on. And it's just like they're notorious for like quality issues in the beginning and then people get them fixed. And it's just like, that's just expected, but they still love them. Funny how that all works.
How much is a job like this? Uh, so it really depends on the film type, which makes me really want to adjust some pricing here. Um, but this one's in ceramic, so this one all around with the windshield is 650. This isn't the first Versa that we've done in ceramic either. We did like a white one. A car like this, I would not expect to just kind of go for the best. But it like, man, introduction to everybody. I, it's just, they, they called asking about ceramic and it's just, it's cool to see. Is this Pro Nano or Apex? Uh, this is Pro Nano. And you know what's cool? This is actually a manual. I don't see very many of those anymore. I was very happy to sit in this and then it's like, oh, it's a manual. It's more fun. How much would you charge for Apex? Um, I want to look, before I, I iron that out, um, I want to look at a couple other super ceramics before I do. So it, it would probably be, um, like all the sides in the back would be probably like 650, 750, somewhere in there. Do you know how to drive his car? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Um, so, I want to, what I want to do is want to take a look at some of the more premium um, super ceramic films. I want to see what other people are doing. Because it's not quite as clear as Pro Nano. So the big thing is higher IR numbers, but it's just, it's not quite as clear. So the heat rejection is fantastic. I drove around with it. I think it looks good. Um, but there's just those, those angles. You're driving it around and all of a sudden you're It'll it just haze up a little bit more than what I'm used to with the with the Pro Nano. So that's where I'm like, I just want to see what the other ones are like. I mean, that's kind of how it felt about carbon near the beginning. It's like it, it's still it was a very new technology, and it wasn't until C2 that I really jumped on board with a carbon because then I felt it was clear enough. Because one of the few things <laughs> that you should have with all your films. They all should be clear to see through. If you're jumping up into something that's more premium, there's you expect those standard features like, oh, you know, I'm spending more. That means it would be, it would look better, um, it would last longer, it would be more clear, right? And to jump up and to have something not quite as clear, um, it's like if you didn't see the other ones, you might not notice. Um, but I would want that disclaimer ahead of time, so. I was in the 50%. 50, 50 and 20. What I would suggest is everybody that's going to possibly carry it, get a sample and then see how you like it on your own vehicle. Drive it around, wait for a sunny day and see if that's acceptable to you. I think it's within a margin where it, it is acceptable, but it's just when you're spending that kind of money on it, I, I just, Compared to like some of the other ones, it's like. I mean, we're not. We're not in the hottest state ever up here. <laughs> so, you know, six months out of the year, you don't. It's not. It's not as much of a priority. Come summertime, you'll definitely appreciate it. But I've really liked driving around with Pro Nano. What scraper is that? Um, I have them on uh, Tint Stuff, mytintstuff.com. 
This is, oh, wait, 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 did we use, oh, no, 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 okay, we, no, I think we used both. So either the Gator Blade that you can get at Sun Distributing, Sun Distributing, Tint Depot, um, that, or this one you can find at My Tint Stuff. These ones are a little bit wider. They're not as scrapey, but they do the job pretty well. And then we have them in a special color too. The Gator Blades are a little bit sharper, um, and they work, they work really well, but they're in this ugly red. <laughs> Um, I haven't been able to check spec clarity yet, but I will say Pro Nano is amazingly clear, so it might just be spoiled. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it might just be an unavoidable thing right now. That's why I want to check everybody else's and some of the more premium ones, because if there's people that are going like, look, we, we absolutely love XR Plus, and this is what XR Plus kind of looks like, well, then, then we know what people are really dealing with. But... If we only mess around with our own, then you, you never know. Just like, you know, uh, lesser expensive plotter, different tools. The more you, you start trying out everything else, the more you kind of, you know, when somebody says, oh yeah, it's amazing and it's perfectly clear. Mm, maybe. Sometimes you can get, oh, the Gator Blades. Yeah, they used to make them in yellow. That was the, like, the original color. I don't know why they changed it to red. There's no hardness difference. Maybe it was slightly cheaper for them. I don't know. Not every tool can be lime green. <laughs> you know what? Mine aren't. Mine aren't in lime green. Mine are just in a brighter purpley color. They probably still make them in yellow because everybody was confused. Everybody's like, I want the yellow one. And they're like, there's no difference. But with a lot of other tools, there's always like a hardness change with a different one. But they're, they're the same. It's like one of the few tools that is. Or maybe they had somebody go, I want a red one. <laughs> I want all my tools to be baby blue. Dab -da -dab -da. Oh, oh my God. I know what you're saying. My, my text to speech totally butchered that. It was like, dab -da -dab -da. yo, listen up. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Man, I love that glass cleaner holder, but it just gets in my way. Eiffel 65. Maybe because I don't use a lot of water like you, I get contamination. Maybe. There's a lot of people, there's people that don't, that, that get clean windows. I, I use a fair amount. The way I've always looked at using more water was, it's just a kind of a, a more thorough speed tool. Because I'm so used to having to move faster. So my way of moving faster was just spraying lots of water and flushing things out much quicker than sitting there and wiping things off. Um, my car had SunTech CIR, RIP, my wife's had CS. What's CS? Expel C. S. Isn't that just color stable then? Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. 
So CIR, is that that I'm assuming is a ceramic? I'm unfamiliar with CIR. So CS, uh, that would basically be just a color-stable dyed film then. So dyed films, even cheap or expensive ones, they're all, none of them will suffer from a low angle haze. They're top level ceramic. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're, you're comparing, like this, this is one of the annoying parts too, it's like, you're kind of comparing apples and oranges, but the way it gets presented is they all should be clear. But the higher you go in ceramic sometimes, um, the less clear some of them are gonna be because of the ceramic that's in them. So to have a good balance between clarity and high performance, that's, that's the magic there. It's like getting a camera lens with a low aperture in a wide field of view. It's just, it gets very expensive and it's difficult. Usually you can find like one or the other, but both together, that's where it gets tricky. But with a nicer color stable, you'll have hopefully hopefully a better color um, and uh, it'll last longer. So a couple years from now, you're not gonna have to pay to have the whole thing redone, which will be far more expensive than just getting it done in the first part. Is it better to shoot in the middle and get a mid-tier mid ceramic? Ah, uh, it's safer. Because there's just not quite as much ceramic. But if your preference is more clarity, then yeah. If you go for like the top level ceramic that just packs a ton of IR block, it's probably not gonna be as clear. But that does, change from brand to brand. I can't check all of them. I thought you were, you were taking that gator blade to a tinted window. <laughs> yeah, that's how, we, that's how we squeeze you out the water now. What about Apex? Um, it doesn't seem to be as clear as the Pro Nano. I want to. I have to. I have to talk to him. I mean, he probably knows it, but this is this is <laughs> like they're a film company. They've been. There's lots of other super ceramics out there on the market, um, and it's obviously good enough for the market or they wouldn't have put it out there. But like on this channel, what you're gonna get is a whole lot of nitpicky feedback. So take everything of what I'm saying with a grain of salt here. So what might be fine for some isn't gonna be fine for everybody. I think Pro Nano is a little bit more clear uh, than the one windshield that I've, uh, I've looked at so far. But that's kind of in one shade. No, the front doors and the windshield, they have a similar haze to them. So, a couple different shades, new batch. Um, there's probably gonna be improvements down the road, but just for an initial release, it's really good. The heat rejection is fantastic. The color's really nice. Um, there's just those times of day that it's not gonna be quite as clear, but that's, that's what that low angle haze is. So for some people, it'll drive them crazy, and other people, they'll just never notice. 
So it's one of those things, too, that if you don't tell somebody, they're probably not going to be thinking about it. But when you come to this channel, you're going to hear all about that kind of stuff. Colorblind and polarized glasses. Polarized glasses for sure. I didn't know about colorblind. That's interesting. I guess that makes sense. Your package has been delivered. Oh, well, thank you. You know, actually, a good comparison is between the GoPro 8 and the 10. I noticed a difference between them, but I've had people watch when I first started using the 10 and go, I don't see a difference. <laughs> but if you adjust the quality, I, I can, you know, like seeing another good example, uh, like phone or monitor, monitor slash phone, yeah, screen refresh rates, 60 versus 120. There's like a clear difference, but not everybody notices that very clearly either. 30 to 60, 60 to 90, um, or definitely 120. Everything gets smoother the higher you go, but like I was trying to show a little bit of jitter to the, <laughs> the guy that comes around and fixes the cable, and he couldn't see it at all. And I'm like, really? You don't, you don't see that little jitter right there? He's like, nope. <laughs> like, oh, well, it's there. It's like trying to tune an AM radio. <laughs> if you're trying to match factory tint on the front too, does it make sense to upgrade to ceramic if everything else pulls the windshield? Is ceramic? No. Uh, if everything else plus the windshield isn't ceramic. No, no, not really. So if you're trying to match the front two to like factory, um, a ceramic, like, the, the film type doesn't have anything to do with the color. Um, really it has everything to do with the tone of the film um, on each individual film and whatever the factory on that vehicle is. They're all different. So on some, my carbon would probably come closer. On some, my dyed might come a little closer. And then on some, maybe my ceramic. So I had a guy in here that had a Toyota, it was a Tundra. He just wanted the front two doors. And he's just, his one thing was like, hey, before you install it, like, I'm cool with ceramic or carbon or whatever. I just want it to be, like, as close of a color match as possible. So when I'm sitting in the car looking through it, I want that to be as close as I can. I just don't want it to look, like, overly brown or something. So I checked. I looked at every film that I had. Um, and the carbon matched the best. And that was really cool. So he was all ready to get ceramic, but instead we did carbon. So let's just put them up side by side. Uh, we also did it in a lighter shade too. Do you recommend solar meter to show customers the benefits? Yes, absolutely. It's just, look at it like in a mm, sales assistant. I don't know. Um, it's a way to put a number on everything. So depends on the heat box style that you have too as well. But if you're, if you're trading out slides, there's like a little bit of wait time in between the slides and stuff. If you have the rotating box, things are a little bit faster. But still the same thing. It's like you put your hand in front of one, you rotate it, you put your hand in front of it again, or you just leave it there. Um, but the meter phys like, gives you an actual number that you can, that, that's in your head as you're showing people. So it's like, you're almost told ahead of time uh, what it's gonna be. So that's been, that's been really, really helpful. So, and it's just like, on, on mine, the, I'll get the meter, I, like I've taken it outside, it reads at about 275 um, on, a, like, on a sunny day, you point it up at the sky, 275. So I leave mine around 300 
and then it's <laughs> it's kind of freaky how like clear cut the numbers are too. So it'll go from 300 to 150 uh, to like 80. So it's like 50% heat reduction, 75% heat reduction, just real clear across the board. It's like half and then half again. And then with the apex, dropped all the way down to like anywhere from like 25 to like 30. So it's even farther down than that. So you're getting like pretty even drops with like every film upgrade that you go with. I said we might cut out the back window and then I cut out the back window. So we'll just do the quarters. I have glass aid here. The beeping. We need to stop the beeping. So the last thing that I really needed was that back window. Now I can put the film on the plotter and then we could probably adjust it. Okay, dude. How do we get you to stop? Here. Oh. Let's do this. Thank you. You've been of great service. Where did I put the key? Did I leave the key in there? Maybe that's why it's yelling at me. Um, so the meter that I got was on Tint Depot, but sometimes they're out of stock there. So, but that's the one you're gonna wanna look for. Just look up solar meter. Switches between watts and, and BTUs. Okay, so loading the plotter. Um, I actually really like having a plotter up against the wall and feeding it this way. Having a cut table is really helpful, but um, like loading it right onto a cut table can be really helpful, but it was always kind of obnoxious for me to load the plotter this way. So let's see. What's a good brand? I don't know. I got the meter sitting, I think up front. I could grab it. I just don't remember what it was called. My heat box is also up front. I'm probably gonna need two, one to leave back here and one to put up there. My showroom is just, <laughs> it's not great. Okay, oh, I got a Canon. Does, oh, does ceramic my question was, does ceramic on the two front windows, um, where's, I took a picture of it. Oh, I took a lot of pictures of my son yesterday. <laughs> That's where it is. Um, does it make sense to tint the front two win windows in ceramic if you don't do anything else? Yes, absolutely. Makes a huge difference. GoPro. Because the, really the main benefit is you, the driver, what you're gonna feel. So, oh man, this is so cool. Do the front two doors in ceramic, and then you're gonna feel a difference between that and the windshield. And I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna wanna do the windshield in the future. So many people do. Because once you feel that difference, you're not gonna, you're not gonna wanna go back. So we were one, we were 57, and oh, that's going up. And then 156 is the speed, which is reasonably slow so we could bump that up a little bit and as far as the force goes we don't really know um, so we were at 57 before we're using a slightly thicker film so we could bump it up to like 60 let's just try 66 and see what happens um, can I pull it up on that screen is that a thing Oh, I'm gonna have two, two desktops here. Yeah, let me go to the other one. Canon. I forgot, I can make a couple of adjustments here, but we're gonna cut from here. So, getting into the software. Um, 
Let's go to desktop. So this is all my streaming stuff. Boom, here's Film Cut. Look at that, isn't this fun? So you guys get to see firsthand how this stuff is, is gonna work. So at the beginning of the stream, we already brought up our car. Um, you start out with a very basic thing, and this is a real plain type of software. So you can set the width of your material to like 35, 36. You're gonna wanna, you got the rollers to account for. So it's a 36 inch roll, but 35 to be on the safe side. Um, so we have these front quarters. Uh, there's one there, there's one there, and then we have the rear quarter windows, which there's here. So all together, this is gonna be a little bit too tall for a 36, um, but I don't know if I have a 34. So what we're going to do now is probably, we'll see, maybe we can flip something. We'll get an extra one in here or we'll see what we can do. Probably should just put them all like this and then just put them in a row. Um, so let's do that. Front door, I'm getting used to this type of stuff again. This is basically just like Tetris. Dun, 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 dun. We're, we'll cut out doubles. This is gonna take longer if these don't work, but we'll cut out a double here. Look at that, now we have a few. Cool. So when I click this button here, um, everything should then just work. So I'm gonna go pro and then click that. <gasps> it's doing a thing. It's running away. Oh, this always scares me. I don't think it knows where the rollers are. Will you not be hand cutting quarter glass? Maybe not on this car. <laughs> So there's some windows that, that aren't gonna matter. You, you'd never be able to tell the difference between plotter or, oh, shh, oh no, we changed the speed. Okay, so if I press this button and then kick this forward, like plotter cutting a back window, plotter cutting quarter windows, you'd never be able to tell. You have a nice ceramic border. Really, the biggest window that you're gonna be able to tell is the front doors back doors with the top edge. Do they sponsor you with a plotter? Uh, yeah, they sent me one. So they sent me a rather budget plotter, which I, man, this is fun. Cause we, we're, there's so many things, so many things to try. And we do this live. So we're gonna know real quick. Um, we're gonna know real quick if I just don't like the software or not. This is kind of like a, a big risk for them because they can tell their customers whatever they want. They can't tell me if these are gonna fit. Like if I have to recut these two or three different times, that's a problem. Oh, look at this. We switched the We, we changed the blade pressure off of somebody's recommendation. Ha <laughs> ha! That went perfectly. That's what you wanna see. What plotter? Uh, so it's called a workhorse plotter. Um, we're using a film software called uh, FilmCut using a, a tint cutting software called Film Cut. Um, but what's cool is you guys can get a free 30 day uh, trial. So whatever you're using right now, feel free to put this up against it. And uh, if you hate it, let me know. If you like it, let me know. I don't care. Um, what is it? Let me, plotter software. Plotter software. There we go. 
So use the, tin, use the code Tint Studio or Detroit Tint Studio. Um, I think I gotta let them know about Detroit Tint Studio because that code might not be working. Oh, this is for the, no, this is for the passenger side. So we have a quarter. Ooh, is this gonna work? I don't know. <laughs> Nervous. Um, so we cut these out this way, which means that we'd have to string them this way. Does it do windshields? Mm, I can see. I, I wouldn't trust software for windshields basically ever. But we'll try it in the future. Oh, I'm just done. Oh, no, I'm not going to pull it up right now. I'll check. I'll check in a little bit for you. So we need our stool. And then that stuff's all good there. We'll get, yeah, we don't need, we don't need very much to do these. Sixty inch plotter can do back windshields. Uh, so can a forty. This is like a fifty. So you're either gonna be cutting like ninety nine percent of what I do is all like thirty six forties. If you're doing model threes regularly and you want to make sure that you have enough to cut out those back windows, then you need a sixty inch plotter. Um, if you, also if you're doing flat, sixty inch plotters are helpful, but you definitely for for auto you don't need it. Let's see. Oh, we should have wedged these too. Oh, dang, this is so weird. I haven't done this in so long. I just. I got a Titan very similar to yours. Nice. Uh, if you want to check out the software, feel free to. It's literally free. Which I think is super cool because that that would be the only thing if I have to like commit to 150 bucks a month, I'm not gonna try many softwares. But if somebody's gonna give it free for 30 days, hell yeah! If I got the machine, why not? Son of a bitch! Does it actually fit? How about that? I think I'm using, I know I'm using the wrong tool for that, but it's what I grabbed. I need an easy reach. Easy reach are some of the best for getting into spots like that. Where did we put it? There's one, good enough. And these had the little like fixed asterisk on them too, which is kind of reassuring. I've never seen that with any software. I've never seen it say fixed. Because more often than not, whatever software that they put out is kind of just like what it is. <laughs> They'll say they adjust some patterns. But then whenever I go to refit those patterns, they never seem to quite line up. This looks like it'll actually work here. This edge is like super consistent with that. There's no gaps there. Nice. I like that. I would use these again. But I, I really liked earlier on when people were like, 
so now, uh, God, who was that? I think it was Gator. He chimed in. He was like, so now you're going to use it for quarter windows? Or like, like that's why you got a plotter is for the quarter windows? <laughs> and it's like, it's so true. If there's one consistent thing that drives me absolutely crazy, it's, uh, it's quarter windows like these. Because the majority of the time, you're going to be just, you're trying to cut them out. You're trying to cut them out. Um, and like, well, you're, you're trying to cut out a bunch of them for when you inevitably, it, it just doesn't quite fit. That's, I'm a little speechless. That's good. Sweet. Okay. Well, that saves some time. Now we have for the other side. Uh, once you trust the patterns, you can pre-cut before the customer arrives and tint the car in like 40 minutes. <laughs> True. True, you can. The only, the only like disclaimer I would say about that and why like, you know, uh, it, was, it was brought up for, for like mobile especially and stuff. If you are 100% sure what's going to walk through your door, like for the appointment, like they're getting this film, they're getting these shades, um, doing that ahead of time, I think most of the time that would work out for you. Um, I like to have the person here for the appointment um, before they, like, I, I don't, I'll discuss shades ahead of time a little bit, but like I say, don't worry about it. We can pick those all at the appointment time just because it gives them time to think. So last night he dropped us off. We were doing 50, 35, and 20. And then this morning he was like, you know what? I thought about it. I'd actually really like to do 20 and just keep it consistent. And it's like, yeah, no problem. So if I had this all pre-cut, I'd have to recut it. Or if I cut this out in color stable or carbon, then I would have been wasting film. So just, it, it definitely saves time. There, there's just that little like disclaimer there. Be sure whatever you're installing is going to be like 100%. Because people, oh man, they like to change their minds. <laughs> Not all the time, but they definitely do. When you cut them, that's when they'll want to change their mind. Oh yeah, we don't have back patterns. So let's cut that out too. Um, that's that. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We'll do the same thing here. So we can do that. Okay, so let's cut this out. Oh wait, do we have to push a button? One sec. Let me just make sure that's there. Okay, now I can hit cut. Oh, I'll check. Hang on one sec. Let me just, I want to watch it cut. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna, I think it's gonna go off track. I think, no, stop, no, stop. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Okay, really, how do you stop this thing? <laughs> okay, there was, a, there was a good comment. There was a good comment um, that said, okay, so we went over this yesterday with, uh, with the rollers. I think this is more made for like 40 inch and 20s. I, for the life of me, I don't know why they, they don't have clear roller spots for like 36s, 36s and 24s. You're, you're kind of like half, half. So the roll went off track a little bit. And, uh, and then that's where, that's where you get into problems. So let me lock this down. Let me hack this off. If that ever happens, I just turn off the plotter. Most of them have a stop button. So I'm wondering what would be the stop button. I don't like having to just...
turn the whole thing off and then turn it back on. Oh, but somebody said, somebody in chat said, I feel sad, I watch your streams, because I'm new. One, your username is hilarious, wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> um, I'm new to learning hand cut. I feel the cutting machine is taking away valuable tips and lessons away from me uh, and making, and others just like me. I definitely understand that. Um, we're not hang, we're not plotter cutting everything. I pressed every button before and it didn't stop. Oh, <laughs> oh that's fun. So I hear ya. Um, we're definitely going to do a ton of hand cutting still on this channel. This is something I get so many questions about and I'm still doing real work here. So this is a one, a quality of life thing for me. Two, uh, th there's times it's gonna let me down. We're, we're gonna dive a lot more into plotters and stuff. I have plenty of videos hand cutting these things. We're still gonna be hand cutting plenty of stuff, so don't worry. We're just, we're gonna be trading off back and forth. Okay, so let's pop this up one more time. Let's click cut. A couple things, if you need to stop it, hit the release lever. It will let the film go. But is that gonna like, is that, is that gonna stop the thing from cutting into my cut strip though? <laughs> I don't know. The 36 inch definitely rides the edges. Yeah, okay, so for, oh man, this is so cool. I'm so glad that I've actually messed around with some nicer plotters too. Because I can tell you exactly some things that you're missing. Something I figured that they would have right off the bat. So on Graftex, you have a roll bar about this wide. So all these rollers, you can adjust a half inch, two inches, like whatever uh, you need here. This is kind of where it, it, it'll balance between 36, 24s, 20s, and whatever size rolls you need. There's two little ones here, and we had to move the film all the way to these two, and then it's only half-half. Um, another thing, this little groove here to help cut off the film, <laughs> that's a little bit low. So there's also no uh, air lockdown, I think. Um, there's no, it doesn't measure the rollers in the beginning either. So every time I start up a graph deck, it, it does a little check from both sides and tells you exactly the film size that you have there. Um, another thing is, ooh, ooh, I had something in mind that was actually really helpful. Um, oh yeah, it's got the little eye that, that knows when your film is out of whack. So like if you, if the film falls back into the machine, like it'll retract until the film is completely uh, at the beginning of the roll. This doesn't have that. So. It's cool to see the features that you miss out on, um, but the main things are all there. Like, it cuts the film. <laughs> That's the main thing. Everything else is like little quality of life upgrades that are really, really nice to have, but you might not always need them. Also, there's just like the the expected things like it's just better hardware, so this isn't maybe gonna last as long. I've seen a, uh, <laughs> a graph tech that I thought we should have replaced, and the company's like, oh no, those things will last forever. The original plotter that you see in my early videos is still the same plotter today that they're using at my dad's shop every day. They beat the hell out of that thing, still running. So graph tech. So this is, oh, I cut out the same one. I'm getting used to this again. It's been a minute. My gripe still minimal, is having to baby the film because of static. 
Yeah, that can be an issue. Some films cut really nice, and some films don't. Uh, Lumar's great for plotters because of the way that they roll it. Um, sometimes they'll pop up, like, they, they roll their film opposite, which is just super plotter friendly. Um, other companies, they'll sometimes curl up at the ends, and if you have a really curly roll too, um, they'll, they'll like roll all the way up and back feed into the plotter. That's not fun either. So the way, how did we cut these out? Can we shrink these? In which way do we have to shrink them? Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh yeah, we did. So we can shrink these, that's fine. My brain doesn't work this way. Like, I, I tin a lot, but when it comes to, like, cutting out templates and then the, the plotters, like, front and back and which way you orient it and which way you can shrink it and stuff, I just have to catch up a little bit. You have to get that system down. So these, I put the right way for shrinking on the top and the bottom if I wanted to. So these should be good. We were able to shrink that just a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna get a lot of people. Oh, okay, so we didn't cut out the doors on the potter. We're just doing the quarter windows. It's a brand new thing here. I'm not new to plotters, but this is a new uh, system for here. Um, I don't know how much I'm ever going to be plotter cutting doors. We'll do some tests, but we'll see. We'll just, we'll see. So that's why we just cut out a couple of quarters. We're, we're, not, we're not optimizing things for film usage right now. That is one of the many things that's nice about a plotter. But that's not, that's not our goal right now. We are quality checking things and seeing is this good enough? Because can you try and plot the back window for scientific purposes? I was. I was thinking about it, and then I didn't. Eesh. I think these are slightly short. These edges are really good. This, no. Ugh. I'm so close. This is all good, this is all good, this is short. That's not good. We gotta hand cut this. I don't have a way to resize these. So if I look at, um, this, this is one of the things that they need. If I could just make these a click bigger, wouldn't be that big of a problem, but mm, these aren't gonna work. Front door. Yeah, rear door fixed, fixed. Left and right fixed. It's not, it's not fixed. They're too short. They need to give me an option to make these a little bit bigger. I don't think I can. That's a bummer. Okay. Well, that's why we're testing things. You got a piece stuck in the middle? No, not underneath the film. If it is, it's just resting on it. There, this one. Well, it was a good run, boys. Why don't I like plotters? Imagine if this was doors. Imagine if you go through all the cutting, the shrinking and stuff, and then you find out your door is a little short. That's what I don't like. So this is a picture, picture perfect example. Yeah, and this piece this is on the outside. So we're gonna be hand cutting these ones. Um, I do have enough film on the back, I think. I think this will be tall enough, so that's nice. So the person that, that was like, hey, 
<laughs> That's unfortunate. I thought it might be golden after those fronts. You never know. <laughs> so yeah, believe me, like I said, there's going to be plenty of hand cutting. It would be great if this always matched up, but it's just never going to be the case. I, I can't adjust. I would make the whole pattern um, slightly bigger. I'd make it just, just a little bit. So in, in a software like Tint Tech, you can just click on your pattern and make it a little bit bigger. You should try the other side. Might be a different seal. But that's just more. I hate it. I hate it. I just okay. So this is this is where you guys. I I have two choices. I can either try and fit the pattern and potentially waste some more time and effort and just see if it'll fit for the sake of checking or I can just do what I know is going to work. And I tend to just go to doing what I know is going to work. So mm. front quarters should be fine. Rear is a little short. I thought you I thought you hated plotters. <laughs> There's gonna be people coming in at all sorts of random times and I'm gonna have to re explain everything. So that, like, on, on a seal like this, you can definitely, you have wiggle room to tuck it in. It's not that big of a deal. But, yep. That's one of those things where somebody would just probably let it go and then just keep moving on with their day. So, not me, though. No thanks. God, we are just taking so long on this car now. I was hoping that would help speed things along. But we haven't written it off entirely. We have one good, one bad. Um, but that's what we're going to have to deal with. So they definitely need a resize option. But even then, like... CJ Ackerman super chatted two dollars. You got this, flex CJ. bicep. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for the two. I appreciate that. Yeah, we'll be okay. We just know it's 50 50. How's this go? Oh, this is the bottom. This is the top, isn't it? Because this is like. It's going to be like this. God, it's such a goofy bottom edge. What do you recommend for a practice film? Tint Depot. They have a lot of films. Mm, I forgot my stool. I feel like I'm going to have to start at 9 o'clock instead of 10. I don't like that. I like 10.
Oh, this way. I was so confused. Super! Michael Barbieri super chatted $10, hey dude I own you for sending me the felt card and not charging me. Thanks. I was surprised you remembered. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell everybody. <laughs> Thank you for the 10, I appreciate it. I owe you for the felt card. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate the order. Yeah, it's just one of those little things. Like, you know, you put it in an order already. You wish you had something on there that you didn't. It's just like, yeah, I'll just send you one. It's cool. I appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Does this fit? Yes, yes, this fits. How do we, see? That's why I told you, you be nice and lucky. <laughs> it was just one of those things. Like when we first came out with the, with the Detroit Sin Studio felt cards, um, he had he had one or he had put in an order, and then it was we were using him or something, and he wanted to add it to the order. He was totally willing to pay for it and whatever. Sent me an email, and then it was just one of those things where it's like you gotta pay for a felt card and shipping again. We'll just send you one. It's cool. <sighs> Are we gonna be using the software always? No, no, we're not. So. We didn't use it on the roll downs. We've only used it on some front quarters. It was good on the that quarter window. It was not so good on the other one. Oh yeah, and he just paid for it. <laughs> paid for it in a super chat. Does, this, does it get slow for you this time of year? Actually, yeah, we've had a pretty decent slowdown. It's also like first, first like full year in business. I haven't been in this location for a full year. So we're anywhere that I've worked um, will we'll typically slow down, especially around this time. But then like you'll have slowdowns. People get used to the weather. It'll pick back up. It'll slow down. Um, it's definitely slower right now though. So I'm gonna hand cut the other one. What I noticed was, maybe this one's okay. There was a little waver down here. Maybe that one's okay. There's a couple of them with some little Jitters right here. I noticed the other one was cut off there. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Anyways, just little things like that. It'll drive me crazy. We're just going to hand cut them. We know. We'll hand cut it, or we'll potter cut other stuff. And we'll try the other quarter window. But I'm really impressed with like most of it. So one of the, I think would be a little bit more difficult is a perfectly lined up edge on this harder rubber seal. That matched up like incredibly well. So if I had a way to just like oversize the pattern a little bit, that's kind of a basic feature I, I want like now. And then a pull cut for a more consistent cut uh, is definitely another thing that I wanna see. But this is all the feedback that I'll give them. And then we'll see, we'll see what happens with it. The ability to oversize your pattern. Hand cuts are more interesting. I appreciate that. They usually turn out a little bit better too. So it's not gonna be a, it's definitely not gonna be a replacement for, for most of what we do, but it's, the idea is a bit of an assistant, especially on some of those really annoying to cut out windows where 
we're like installing it and installing it and installing it just to have like two or three copies of it to go back to back to back. Ah, oh, way better. Way more helpful that way. Because cutting out a template just doesn't always work well. Wow, I just totally butchered that. That just went. <laughs> uh, do I have enough overlap? I should probably cut out a bigger piece. Yeah, I'm gonna recut that. See, I know I don't always get it right, but if I know that it's gonna work, that's what I'll use it for. Oh, we don't have, uh... oh, we can do this, right? How do we, no. Um, let's change the speed. You push this button and you can kick it forward. And then, is that, is that gonna work? You get the film to press into the corners. Uh, if there's less to bunch up, so that was the mistake I made here. Um, if I have less material to go in there, um, it'll just cut out a lot better. So for example, this right here where I can round my edge a lot easier. Um, if the whole thing is like overlapped and I'm trying to like wedge a blade in there, it, it's gonna bunch up on me pretty badly. I just kind of went for it. Oh, and what's cool is when you get a couple of them to like line up together. This should work. How much soap do I put in my bottle? Uh, typically one ounce per gallon. I use a little more than that though. I do probably about one and a half ounces per gallon. Okay, so we're oversizing this, because it can be probably about there. And this stuff's thicker. Yay. So some of these really the tighter cuts and stuff, I just cut those on a board instead. I'd much rather try and round these. I'd rather try and round these much cleaner. Like this. <laughs> Wait, so the plotter is useless? Uh, not entirely, no. It did good on one quarter. It did not so great in one of the corners on another one. So... I just don't have, I mean, I've got some time to play around with it, but I've got like a full back window and a windshield to do as well. So the idea for today was doing it for the quarters, which is on something like this, the biggest thing that it can help me out with. I'll spend way more time trying to cut out one, two, three copies of these um, in the hopes that I get some clean ones hopefully on the first try, but if I have a messy one, then I just need the patterns. So if you can have a little bit of an oversized pattern with a quarter window like this. So that helps. So the Versa is an easier version of all the other quarters that I had to deal with. This gasket at the bottom is like very loose.
But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. <laughs> Better. We should be okay. Ha! Perfect. That's what we want to see. On a quarter like this, shrinking isn't as important, but I have a habit of shrinking like a lot. A lot of little things. So this is a little bit of a bigger quarter window. So definitely shrinking this one. Just be on the safe side. Took a second. Yay. So we got three out of four. Never hurts to shrink. It does hurt some of the people on my Facebook group. They're like, why are you shrinking that quarter? Oh my God. It's like, it's okay. It'll be fine. So we're gonna do that one last front quarter and then we got a back glass and a windshield steel. <laughs> We've spent enough time on the doors, right? Sweet. Much better. So there was just a little gap in the bottom corner. It's very inexcusable. You just that, you know, you might think back rear door, I mean, any gaps are inexcusable, but especially on like the back rear one, you're gonna look to change lanes and then you'll see it. It'll drive you, it would drive the owner crazy. Oh, there we go. So which way, where's mine? There we go. So that would be this side. Oh shit. We'll just do this one. I haven't even used that. Okay, so how you guys are gonna know whether it's plotted or not, look at the, look at my overlap. I got, can't hand cut that. Don't freeze. No, don't freeze. I need, need you to not freeze right now. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay, there's that. Ooh, I like that one. That's good. That's really good. There's, there's, there's really promising things about some of the cuts that I'm seeing. So that corner being a little short, we're still new. 
but it's frustrating to see something like that. Um, but a lot of little things like this edge being like perfect and everything else just kind of like being almost exactly where it needs to be. Like the only problem with that one was that little, little corner was like, there was like a little groove in it. Maybe it was my plotter messing it up. I, I don't know. But seeing all the rest of this is really, really good. Because I could take something like this and give it the little, make it slightly bigger routine, just like oversize it just a little bit. That's a quick fix, not something that I like to have to rely on, but that's gonna be a real quality of life upgrade. So that's gonna be like my, one of the first things that I asked them about. And then I have a small list of things that I've been told as I was talking about them in, uh, on the stream yesterday that they were actively working on, so. Because I really don't need to like cut windshield strips out of windshields and, and whatnot, but probably in the future that'll be a thing. But that's good. That's really good. That saved me some time and some frustration. Those top corners especially. Woo! Okay. We ended that on a good note. So let's get this back window knocked out. <laughs> Somebody was asking about windshield. I know I have to look. I just reminded myself. They're like, it's right, it should be right there. <laughs> and then I forgot. <laughs> then I forgot to check. Let me see what options we have for this really quick. It's 114. So I said we'd be done probably about 2, 2.30, which is good. Okay, so if we go to desktop. Um, what do we got? No windshields on this. So we got back window. Uh, and absolutely no windshield options on this. Not mad about that at all. I wouldn't even use them if they had it. There, some people like to see that. Like, in the list of things that they're like, they're, you know, oh, they have windshields, oh, they have this, they have that. Windshields have been so unreliable Wow, we just walked around the entire car. Windshields have been so unreliable with like everybody's software because uh, aftermarket glass, factory glass, there's differences between uh, dot matrix patterns. Um, that, like there's the obvious ones from model to model and then there's the not so obvious ones between like, it's just they painted the border slightly wider on this one. I find it easier to hand cut a windshield. Um, I agree. If, if you're putting that much film at stake, you wanna know for sure that pattern's gonna work for you. So back windows, for whatever reason, there, like, there's, there's typically only like one back window option that you're gonna run into. Um, and that's a lot easier to account for. Also, you don't have mirror cutouts and stuff like that. So you can, you can be a little bit bigger on most back windows anyways and generally be okay. Just windshields is where it kind of... I, I'm not going to gripe on any, anybody's software for, for windshields. Oh, I should mention. <laughs> there is a clear software difference between film cut and film cut pro i've been told so we're only going to be using film cut film cut pro uh is something completely different so you're going to have different patterns entirely it's uh it's a tint depot type of thing they do this to me and i find out as we go which is kind of drives me crazy. But that's why I thought there was enough potential in film cut.
I've been using your pull shrink method for windshields, uh, and it's been going super well. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Makes a world of difference. I didn't really understand it until much later. I still took, like, I've been shrinking windows for a long time. I didn't really understand pull shrinking because I'm always, like, looking for a visual cue. And with pull shrinking, you don't really see as much happening with it um, unless it's just laying right down on the glass. But sometimes you, like, pull it away, you'll shrink it some, and then you got to, like, let it back down, and you'll see it have, it it's smoothed out. It's just real even. That's awesome. Yeah, just remember... Just remember, it's, it's, you're just able to shrink over a wider surface area rather than bunching it up on all, all like the peaks as it's resting on the glass. So that's why it goes down easier. Took me a little while to get. Yeah, me too. Reverse rolling, pull shrinking, any of that stuff. That took me a little while to understand. I learned it from other people, though. How much do you charge for film removal? I had to remove film on an old car and I charged 50 bucks. Ooh, I charged uh, <laughs> usually like 50 for a window. Um, but it depends on the window. So came off in little pieces and was annoying. That's another thing. There's different levels of removal. Um, I Removals we get here uh, up north aren't, aren't usually that bad. Uh, but every once in a while, I come into one that's super bad. Uh, they just, they're incredibly time consuming, and there's so much extra work um, in making sure that I'm going to give you a, you know, if we're retinting it, that you're going to get a good job at the end of it. Because I have so many little pieces to scrape off, so many little spots of glue that I got to make sure are taken care of. And then sometimes you tin it once, and then you miss some glue, and then you got to tin it again. So, I've just been near pricing them out. So if everything besides the windshield, I just double the price of my standard. It's 250 for removal on all the sides in the back. And then if something was like excessively bad, I'm just I'm I just not even going to touch it. Cuz <laughs> there's usually somebody that's willing to do that much cheaper and they're better off going to them and then they can get the removal done for much cheaper than, than I'm going to charge them. I'll retin it, though. You'll do, you'll do a lot more cars in the amount of time that you'll do one removal. So that's where it's like you don't want to have to charge that much, but if it makes sense to do it, then you kind of have to do it. I used to charge more to remove tint than actually just a tint because I hated it for so freaking much. I don't blame you at all. I mean, it's horrible. It just, it takes a long time to do. It may, it like, it'll just ruin your day. You, you, you'd rather tint a bunch of cars in a day than do one simple removal or one, <laughs> one removal because they're never simple. Ah, I forgot, I need a bulldozer. God, I've been doing a lot of walking. Did you cut this out on the plotter? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we did the quarters. Uh, we hand cut the back quarters because we had a problem with one of them. Um, front quarters worked out really well. The rest of it is all hand cut. We're going to get into cutting more with a plotter, but I don't really ever plan on using it to replace hand cutting on doors, but there'll be times where it's going to be a really, really good assistant. But that's, that's a real brief summary. The cuts that I got out of the quarters were really, really good. 
there's just there was a spot on the rear quarter. All the other ones looked really good. Maybe it was a wobble in the plotter. I don't know. I, but I didn't have time to mess around with it. We got to keep going. <laughs> I bet it'll be worth its weight when it comes to straight windshield brows. Except there's no uh, windshields. <laughs> We just had a big discussion about that, too. <laughs> so where I think it's going to have the biggest potential here is going to be like stuff like truck back windows. Um, there, that's it, just truck back windows. Truck back windows. Most annoying quarter windows, random stuff here and there. I have a graphics project that I'm going to be using. It'll 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 fit in a little bit here or there. It's not going to be a be all end all though. It's definitely not going to replace what we normally have been doing. But everybody wants a plotter because they want it to entirely replace hand cutting. They just never will. Use it only for paint protection film. That's a big, that's a big benefit of it. Paint protection film, vinyl work. Uh, you can get into cutting leather. Like there's all sorts of stuff. You could even make uh, t-shirts with it. Like the graphics, the, uh, the iron on whatever. <laughs> like there's, there's a whole bunch of uses for them. shit going into a car with Frankenstein method. I don't think so. I don't think I've actually just tripped and fallen. I had somebody open the seats on a Fusion and they're like spring loaded and it knocked me in the mouth and I had a fat lip for like a week. Not quite the same, but be careful with those older model Fusions. <laughs> I've definitely bumped my fair share of seats and headliners and stuff like that, though. That's a quick way for them to get some dirt. Um, I tint mobile. I'm looking to get a canopy for the ones. Any tips to contamination at its lowest? I'm barely getting back into it. Um, not really. Just kind of watch the channel. A lot of what we do is just, if you follow stuff on here, this is how I keep stuff clean whether I be inside or outside, but tinning outside, you're, you're tinning against the elements, it's, it's tough. So if, as long as you're enclosed, uh, that'll help out a bunch. <laughs> My trip when Cutting a front windshield and ruin the whole thing. Oh, I've slipped up and like 
cut them weird or cut something short. But carrying in in a pattern like that, I don't think so. I've messed up the pattern, so. Best tip, take the glass out. <laughs> That's it. Let's remove the whole back window. Back windows, windshields, side doors, whole thing. Yay, this worked out real nice. Do you see the post of the guy that removed the whole door window yeah uh, we were I told him to post that we we had a little discussion last time he was here uh, he came across the stream and he was asking why I don't do that because <laughs> like most people most people don't do that but I think it was said he was in Iceland or something that's that's how a lot more companies do it out there I guess so it was just cool. Uh, cool to see some differences like that. I like how he presented it. Yeah, people talk about pulling the sweeps and having trouble figuring out how to take certain doors apart. Imagine also having to unbolt a window and or uh, like removing rivets and <laughs> pulling glass out of the car, trying to not scratch it and then reassemble it all. It's like, oh. So fun. All right. Well, we have most of a car done. Um, we have everything but the windshield. So we are going to be doing that next. Just one little, aha, one little air bubble right at the top. Oh, that corner looks so good. Little things. What are we doing? Uh, 50. Only one car has rivets nowadays? Well, I wouldn't have known that. So we gotta get our 50. This is stuff right here. So we did 20 on all the rest of it. We're doing 50 on the windshield. This is a very, very straightforward windshield. <laughs> At that point, you're more of a window tint mechanic than an installer. I was really curious to see how he tints outside of the car. Um, I know most people don't have like a nice setup for it. They just prop the, the glass against a wall or something. He had uh, a suction cup system like just a suction cup mount against the wall. Um, and then there's another guy that posted uh, alongside it who had a similar setup and he had it over a sink. And I was like, oh, that's super cool actually. Cause then it's just, everything's getting washed and cleaned and then it's all just going down the drain. But getting to that point, yeah, no thank you. Are you still at the glass shop? Nope, I am 100% here when I have appointments. No, and that, as far as I know, they're still looking for a tinner, so it's kind of like wasted time, but hey, it is what it is.
It was a good run. They, as far as I know, maybe they don't want one as much. Maybe that's why they're not trying to find a tinter as hard. Um, but they, they were looking. They didn't want to just outright stop the program. But they're, since they started their tinting program, their glass business has grown a lot. So it's definitely, like, it was always an add-on. It was never, like, a big chunk of their business. It was always just, like, probably rent at the end of the month is what that covered. Fun facts for BMWs, you can get the glass out by pushing a ruler between the windows. Oh, I'd love to see that. I'm not gonna try it, but I'd love to see it. Tips on removing negative shop reviews? Uh, be a better business? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, you, like, if something's completely unwarranted, you can, I know you can message Google. Like, they have a way to, like, dispute something. But don't sit on it too long. You could try that. Um, and then also reply to the business review and just move on. Because one thing people will do is they'll read replies. So they'll hear one side of the story, and then they'll hear the other side of the story. And no matter what, you'll always have far more, like as a good business, you'll always have far more positive reviews than negative. So they'll just get drowned out. No, you, don't, you don't have to worry about having a perfect five-star rating. Most businesses, most good businesses don't. There'll always be that one one person, that one review, or even in a, if you had a handful. But, you know, they gotta be somewhat warranted. Does this Versa have a manual transmission? It does, actually. I was really happy to see that. Thought they got rid of all manual cars. Not yet. I know they have a few more, but you just don't see them much anymore. Save the manuals. It was funny. One of my first jobs was as a car valet. And then Nick knows this one. I don't know. Oh, he is. <laughs> he was the guy that said, save the manuals. Nick knows this story because we worked. He, got, he helped get me a job at a restaurant um, working as a, as a valet. And he's like, I know how to drive manuals, but you're probably never gonna get a manual. So when they ask you if you know how to drive a manual, just say yes. And he kind of talked me through how to drive one, but we never had one to practice on. So then eventually we would work alternating shifts. Sometimes we'd be on the same shift for like, a, like two or three hours. And then there were plenty of times though after a while where I was basically, I was on my own. And then there's this Chrysler Crossfire that rolled up. Man, I was sweating bullets. <laughs> I got in the car, I looked down, there's three pedals and a stick and I'm like, oh no. And as a vet, like the valet was around the back of the restaurant and they had like a band that would play there, like different bands that would play there every week. I wish I could get that job back. <laughs> 
So I waited for them to walk in the restaurant. They dropped off, like they got out of the car, gave them a ticket. They walk inside, and then I, I sit there. I stall it three times. Then I finally got it in first gear. I was driving it around the building. And then we'd park in like the funeral home next door uh, because most of the time they're, they were cool with it. So I finally kicked it into first gear and I didn't change it. I drive all the way down, down the side street, back around. And then there's like this little hump, this little hill to get into the, into the parking lot. Stalled it another two or three times. Finally got it up in there because I had to get into second gear at that point. Got it in the parking spot, stalled it again in the parking spot, uh, but it was stopped. And then as soon as I got out of the car, start walking back, the guy came out of the restaurant, saw me walking back with his keys, handed me five bucks, and was like, yeah, they just didn't have good seating, so we're going to go somewhere else. And then hopped in the car and took off. Whew. And then there was the next one where I stalled it right in front of them, and they gave me a really funny look. But they had a manual. There was like, I, I got into a car. It was a manual uh, Grand Am. And I've, I don't think I've ever seen a manual Grand Am ever since. But there's one that existed. But yeah, I might have taken some years off of that clutch's life. <laughs> oh man, not fun. Do you ever tint side mirrors? Ah, uh, no. Oh no! What a time. Hang on one second. Cannon. Ugh. But now you can drive a stick? I hope so, because we have this car in here. <laughs> can I? Yeah, I had a Pontiac G5 that was a manual. I learned how to drive one since then. I'm, I, so I like driving manuals a lot now. That was just funny. <laughs> We got this one in here. You have to have a good foot for driving stick. You, there's just a balance. There's always, like, there's, they change from car to car. Some have a heavy clutch, some have a light clutch. Cars like these are really, uh, really straightforward. I've still stalled a handful of, of newer ones, but they're like, they had like this pretty tight sweet spot where you had to like rev it up a little bit faster, um, just a little above where I thought it would be. Because I, I don't like over revving a car, so I always try and keep it like it sounds like I owned it. This one was super easy. Okay, one second. Hang on, I know, I know, I know. There we go. Yay, and we're back. These longer live streams, this battery gets about three and a half hours, so if I keep the live stream to about three, you never see that. Three and a half hours, that's about when these LP battery dies. Okay, there we go. And then, uh, it was cool. On my, on my G5, I, I had a remote starter on it, too, which people s would say don't put a manual on a stick shift because if you leave it in first, they'll jump forward. But I always taught myself from day one, leave it in neutral and put on the parking brake. So I never, actually never had that problem. If I ever thought that I left it in first, I just wouldn't remote start it. But I was really happy to have a remote starter on it.
What are some what? What are some other ways that you set up to record instructional videos to put up on YouTube? What do you mean? Most of what we do is just this. I don't do as many regular YouTube videos anymore. Um, if I do, they take much longer to film. Um, I can just do it with a the different camera. It's a. Uh, I don't even have like a super fancy camera. It was the Canon G7X Mark II. Uh, it's like a really good point and shoot, but it's not as fancy as my other one with the changeable lenses. Just much easier to shoot on something like that. Without the GoPro, I'd like to do videos for PPF. Um, well, if you don't want to use a GoPro, uh, angles are really tough. So you're kind of moving the camera around a lot and like shifting it, doing a thing, moving it, doing a thing, moving it again. It's really, really time consuming. So this little guy over here actually, um, this, let me just move it. So this is a camera slider. I haven't used this much yet. I intended to. Um, the tripods are separate, but so this is this is the meat meat of this one. Let me just show you. So this guy right here, this is a G7X Mark III or Mark II. Um, little point and shoot. They added a mic jack, so yes, get one with a mic jack. Um, that way you can have a wireless microphone. But something like this, uh, you could use uh, something a little bigger, something a little better, kind of like my the other camera that I have sitting over here. So this guy, uh, this is a uh, SL2. Uh-oh. Hello. But really, any modern Is everything okay? <laughs> um, really, any modern... What was that? Sorry, I'm walkie-talking. <laughs> um, Insta360, the, so you're going to want something with a little bit bigger of a sensor um, for indoors. The, the little annoying part about something like a GoPro or an action cam is you need a really good, you, you need really good lighting to make them look better. They're, they're really made for outdoors. So the GoPro is just a great camera for head mount action shots and if I'm running around doing stuff. I there's there's not a better camera for what I'm doing right now for, for this. But if you if you have time to set things up like on a tripod and kind of play around with it that way, then you could use a um, you could use a better camera. So like I just like this. The G7X has really nice colors. It's not overly expensive. I mean, it's like, I think it's like six or seven hundred. Oh, shit, where's the, hang on one second. Canon. Thank you for taking the time to explain it. Yeah, for sure. GoPro. So that's where, like, this is really a flexible camera for, for getting a lot of stuff done while I'm tinting. Um, but if you have a lot of extra time to, like, shut up, set up angles and whatnot, 
Um, that's where... Oh, okay, cool. That's where, um, like, a more traditional camera um, is going to be helpful. And most of them are going to be fine. Like, you get a, a decent Sony mirrorless. But when you're talking about ones with interchangeable lenses, the... Oh, shit. This is different. Guys, how do we remove this one? I forgot. There's like a little tab here. I don't... Somebody want to help me out with this? I, I, I'm okay with leaving this. Just looks like it's easy to pop out. There's like a little notch here. There's no screw. Um, is there like a little, little clip or something that I can push down? Push up. I'm not gonna just rip it off. It's not wiggling forward. Jank it upwards. You guys are being so... <laughs> not helpful. <laughs> Rip it upwards, push up, jank it upwards. Yeah, none of that, none of that is, sounds very safe to deal with glass. So if it's like, tap it with a, a light hammer, I couldn't feel a tab there, so there's probably something there. Uh, it, it, it had like a little notch, so I was just seeing if there's anything helpful. If not, I'm just gonna keep it out of the way. Just jank it up. Yeah, no. <laughs> How about not? Yeah, I'm just gonna do this then. I'll wait for somebody else with a smarter answer. <laughs> How do you remove it? Just remove it. Oh, okay, thanks. But yeah, for uh, for anybody that wants to get into like video, live streaming and stuff, look at what you're gonna be doing with it. It's not something that I really considered a whole bunch when I first started, but a uh, point and shoot camera is good. Uh, if you're gonna be holding it, walking around, um, and putting it on a tripod. GoPro is not going to look quite as nice. Um, where a GoPro is really helpful is for putting it on like a chest mount or a dirt bike or uh, it's an action cam. They will look better outside versus inside unless you have really good lighting. So I put a fair amount of money into the lighting setup in here too. So that's why this is gonna just look better here. It's all overhead lighting. I have nothing, nothing bright on the side walls. You need a longer, small, I'll have to watch a video. Okay. I'm just gonna leave it. It'll be fine. You push it upwards, you push it. Is there like a clip in there that I have to push down? Or you just literally take a hammer, lightly tap it, and then the whole thing will come off. Mirror tab is further in. Okay, so there is like a little clip in there. This is a really small screwdriver. Look at that, this is itty. Okay, there's a clip there. All right, thank you guys. Now we have some more helpful sounding answers. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought, it just, I don't, I don't remember. I got a hammer sitting around here somewhere. We're gonna leave it.
Anyways, um, so if you're going to be putting a camera and uh, just kind of shooting general video like tutorials and stuff, then any number of modern cameras. Just if you get something with interchangeable lenses, uh, you're going to have the cost of the camera body and then you're going to have a much bigger cost with a lens. Whatever the stock lens that a lot of those cameras come with, you can buy far better ones. Uh, but again, kind of for the purpose of whatever you're doing. So like then there's focal lengths and stuff and people will change out the lenses for like different things or shots. So like you're gonna use a different lens for portraits versus video and then when you're shooting video, do you need a wide angle or do you need a close one? All that stuff matters. There's a lot to learn. But that's why I suggested the G7X because it's all around just a great looking, easy to shoot. Halfway decent autofocus. It's not amazing. But it's a Canon, so it looks really good. Right out of camera. Anyways, nobody cares. Where's my... Where's my... I have two of them. Oh, come on. How do I misplace that squeegee so often? I have two of them. Oh, wow, well, I had it in there. Remind me to never put it in there. Car gets like 45 miles per gallon on the highway. I believe it. Probably sips gas. And then it probably is going to get even more when he's not using his air conditioner near as hard. <laughs> three hours, three hours for a car, one hour looking for my tools. Oh, tell me about it. That's, uh, that happens more often than, uh, than I'd like it to. All the extra, you see it a lot. There's some days where I just kind of have everything nailed down. I know where it is. And then there's some days where I just like have to, I'm just wasting time walking around. So, keeping all your tools on hand or whatever you can on a belt, really important. And then knowing where you put stuff, which I don't do a super great job of all the time, it matters. Today was a very distracted day. Do you use the tin shop to launder money? What kind of question is that? <laughs> what the hell? <sighs> um, been watching for a while. Uh, I want to get tint done, but I've heard it only lasts five to ten years. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get um, a fairly decent film. Um, from a company that it gives you like a warranty form and then you're gonna want to hang on to that so if the film ever fails on you uh, the shops gonna replace it or if it's under a pretty decent company they'll find another one uh, to replace it cuz there's I've seen Lumar warranties come back like seven eight nine years later you know, with like a bubbled up back window or whatever. Um, tint, everybody sells tint with a lifetime warranty, but how they handle those warranties, it really is 
not something people think of a whole lot. So, but a lifetime warranty film uh, basically comes with a little, little thing there that most of them will say, um, as long as you own the car, it's covered. So even if it were to fail down the road, you should get it replaced at no cost. But 10 years later, coming back in for a warranty <laughs> is, always, uh, is always kind of funny when you get tinted reactions from that. How does your warranty card look? I don't always hand them uh, a warranty card. I should more often than not. But there's like a, Geo's got an online registration thing. They got really fancy warranty cards. Um, the only annoying thing about the warranty card The only thing annoying about the warranty cards um, is like they're so glossy that like no pen seems to stick to them. So you register it on the website with some like info and then I always have a record of it too. It just would matter really if you're going out of state to another company or something or, or like you know that tint shop went out of business. Um, Cause then you still want your car redone, right? Well, if it's under the film brand, like maybe that's something more people don't realize is like when I buy a phone, that phone has typically like a one year manufacturer's warranty. Well, you go back to the store and they'll usually handle that stuff for you. But um, you can also go direct to the company for those concerns too. You usually have to like mail it in or something like that. But for for window film, it's it's a similar thing. Uh, authorized and shop authorized shop installs the film um you you got the company's film so the company then is going to want to take care of somebody that got their film installed so they'll have a network of installers so even if you go out of state they'll usually handle things directly with the shop they'll refer you to somewhere that's local and then you'll get the issue then taken care of. And then, you know, usually there's a back handshake deal between the film company and the shop. So, you know, two, three, four years from now, if you have a film that's guaranteed to last five years, this is also for shops listening and tenors. If you, if you buy a film with a lifetime warranty, you install it. And then you get it, and then you install it, and then all of a sudden you have a bunch of comebacks. Your, your first priority is going to be knocking on the door of the company and being like, hey, I'm having all types of problems with your film. You need to cover this. And they'll have any non number of things ironed out in their like terms of service and stuff, or in their, uh, basically in their warranty information. So... Some lifetime warranties cover uh, discoloring, and some, like that's why I say color stable a lot. Color stable refers to the color. So if the color changes, you can have a lifetime warranty that doesn't cover color change at all. So you could have a film go from, you know, neutral to brown, and then the company's gonna go, yeah, you know, our better films cover for stuff like that, that film doesn't. Well. You just should have read the fine print. But every single one of them will blanket their films under some sort of like lifetime warranty term. But it's up to you to look through what that means for you as a business. Because... Whoop! Because eventually something can go wrong and some film companies will, will hand you new film some companies will handle it a little bit different. So. It's good. It's good to know all that kind of stuff. Is that 50? Yes. Horn blows. That means we're done. Time's up. Put away your squeegees.
Oh, there it is. Are you really good at putting screen percentages? <laughs> Actually, no. I did a good job on mine, but I had some tips from my wife. So I guarantee you, somebody at a phone store could do a screen protector way better than me. I'm gonna put it on like a tinter. I'm gonna like spray it down, squeegee it a bunch of times, and then wet apply it. But if you do them regularly, it's just, you kinda know what to do. We put, we got uh, iPhones, we put glass screen protectors on them. And they have this really cool glue that you just basically tap it uh, near one of the edges or the center, and it'll kind of like self-stick to the whole thing and smooth out most of the bubbles, and then you just touch up the edges. Those have been around for a little while, but like putting those on, you put them on dry, and then you sit there with a little sticky and like take off all the little pieces of dust and stuff. But they have this nice little plastic centering thing. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> I don't do them that often, so. With a few tries, I, I can probably get a better hang of it, but yeah, I'm not like, not pro, pro screen protector applicator. And squeegee so satisfying. <laughs> he doesn't use screen protectors because he can't hand cut them. Pull shrink phone protect you guys. Uh, the liquid glass screen protectors. I don't know exactly what it was called, um, but they, no, it was. It wasn't like there was an actual glue on it that was already pre-applied. There's this one weird one I tried for. Uh, an S8 that I had. And it was like you put some drops of glue and then you put the glass on it and then you cure it with like a UV light. That one was interesting. But this one was just like, I don't know, it was a pack of three for like 10 bucks. So they've come down in price so much, it's crazy. This looks like it turned out pretty good. I want to say that as I'm like looking it over. I want to say it like after I'm sure and then I'll we'll be like, yes. No, this thing turned out great. Hell yeah. That's the last thing. That's it's such a such an easier windshield though. When it's brand new, um, it's just super clean and you got lots of room to work with. And this checked all those boxes. So we have a couple little touch ups. It's two o'clock. But definitely, <laughs> definitely longer. Yeah, this looks really good. So we're gonna just do a little bit of touch up and then call it a day. You're like me with your display boards and your tools. Looks fun, I like having variety and organization. Yeah, those I'm trying to, I got these little hooks. I need to order another pack of them. Um, I had a bunch of extra triages and stuff like that. that. That's what I used to have in the toolbox, but I need to rearrange stuff a little bit more. Uh, so it's a little bit more functional with this box because I'm misplacing. See, like this drawer has some applesauce in it. water again with the bigger dot matrix cut out 
why you do that? <gasps> I lost my limited edition triage reach tools. Dang. You're not supposed to use that. You're just supposed to keep it on a shelf. Never touch it. I used all my triage. Um, the purple tint was triages. And then one day the, the owner, actually recently the owner called me, the owner of triage, and he was like, is there anything in particular that you want? And I'm like, if you have those triages, please send them to me because I really like them. They sent me a, a new material, too, to try out. I don't think I'm supposed to talk about it. But who's watching? Nobody's watching. I was just trying it out on this one car, and then I lost it. Dang, that sucks even more. Weren't even sure if it was worth using. And then boom, there you go. That's how it works. That's such a bummer. <laughs> I needed to borrow. At least you lost, at least you owned it. I mean, that's a super bummer. I lost a, a screwdriver for an installer once. It was a limited edition, or it was a special edition, like, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it was pink, and he just, he had it in a set. This guy was always super organized with his tools. He had the little holders and everything for him. So he knew if something was missing very quickly. And uh, I was like, hey, can I have a Phillips screwdriver really quick? And then I left it in the car. <laughs> that ship sailed and the guy never brought the screwdriver back and I couldn't buy another one. And then every time he opened his box, he sighed. He was like, you know, I was having a good day. And then I just, that screwdriver, it just, there's something, it's, there's something missing in here. It was just every time I was there. If it makes you feel better, I got 85 out of 100, so you had a much higher number than I did. Can you use your green flooring as a green screen? Actually, yes, I could. I could key out the green. That's interesting. I like that thinking. I wouldn't make the whole thing green. But like having something, because it's, it's very unique. Most of the other stuff is not green. Having something happen with that, that'd be really, I'd, I'd like to just see what it would do. It probably wouldn't look consistent, but it would be funny to play with. Also, depth wouldn't work either. So it's kind of just like whatever background we put there is what it would be. So I don't even know what we would do. Have it say like and subscribe. <laughs> also, when I pull out my, oh, dude, okay, I really want to try it now. I, I like, I'd have to set it up for like a next stream or something. Probably forget to do it. But I was gonna say when I pick up like a squeegee, right, the same color, this is gonna do exactly the same thing. So anything green is going to be keyed out. But it, it's basically like you're just gonna put either a video or an image right behind it. Perspective is not gonna change with it. So it's just like there's a hole in the screen. So I don't know what we'd put there, but it sounds like it'd be a really fun thing to play with. Woo! Well, this is about I mean, other than the other ceramic Nissan Versa that we did, this is about the best moving ticker, maybe. If I think of something, it'd be really fun to put back there. But it's like, 
it's not, it's not like you could put something that's scrolling around it. And then, I, but the problem is I move. It would basically be like you cut out a hole and then there'd be something behind it that would all move as like one image. So like it, it just, yeah, it, it'd show you. Sun Distributing understands. <laughs> Make it look like a huge canyon. Yeah, you could put like, literally like somebody said the floor is lava. You could put like just a lava floor underneath. You, like you could do all types of stuff. That wouldn't look weird. Not at all. I'm looking for the key here really quick. I know I put it down somewhere, but before I shut all the doors. The pits of hell. There you go. It's, it would be, I, I, I'd be really curious to see what the different, or what, what we would do with it. I wonder if it's in here. Oh, it is. It's right up here. As somebody says it, center council. Thank you. Woo. There we go. So we did 50 on the front windshield. We did 20 on everything else. Turned out really, really nice. We even plotter cut a couple of the quarter windows. I know. Whoa. What? Some went well, some went not so well. But in the end, turned out really nice. Canon. I don't lose keys, that's crazy. We got it in here, and we haven't left, so it's somewhere around here. That's how I am with all my, all my tools, though. How do we ban somebody? You should key the green to the Lexan logo. Ban. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe we could do something with like alerts. That would be interesting, but I don't know what it would be without an alert. Compliments to the chef, look good, tasted strange though. I, I, I'll wholeheartedly take that. Did you finally go Apple with your watch and phone? I did, actually. There, okay, if, if it's just you using a phone, in the past four, four or five years, Apple's done some things to catch up. Um, there's some real, real nice quality of life software improvements, especially when you're, when you're talking to family. So iMessage, I knew, I, I, I was always bummed out to lose iMessage. Uh, but iMessage, super nice. The integration with the watch, Siri's gotten a ton better. Reminders are super helpful. Um, and then there's, like, there's a lot of very similar things. I think the design of the Note 20 is like a little bit better. This is kind of just a, this is a, this is a chunky boy here. Um, but there's, there's some things that just, it works really well. I like facial recognition. I like that way better than, uh, than the camera recognition. All right, we're going to shout out some super chats here. Does the other one work? No, it's only been one. What? Rick and I have to Note 20 Ultras. They are amazing. I that's what I was. That's what I switched from. I, they it's a it's a solid phone. I was really happy with it. Um, but when you get into like, there's just there there are some things. They both have their pros and cons. So I I don't know. It, it's it's a close call. But with family and stuff, AirDrop. Ah, uh, AirDrop is great. It still has a couple little hangups, but it works. Better with outside connections too. Like my headphones connect way more consistently to this and then switch to my computer and then switch back. So there's just some little things like that. All right, so big shout outs uh, to Super Chats. Michael, CJ, LKB, Daniel Reyna. Thank you guys so much. I, I greatly appreciate all the support.
Mr. Tech Savvy from Dean Rooney. <laughs> uh, <laughs> airdrop is great until you get nudes from strangers. <laughs> oh, geez. I think the government tracks you more on the iPhones, though. Not sure. I have no idea. And Google is like a freak about tracking stuff. Apple's always been pretty strong about privacy. Google is just like, We'll track you a thousand ways because that's their business is, is to advertise to you and sell that to other people. But regardless, they both are in some way, shape, or form. But those are all like nitpicky, nitpicky things. You, you can't go wrong with either one of them. It's just as a, as a group, as a little ecosystem, there's, there's some refinements there. I was really surprised. Before I end, I was really surprised about maps. I thought Apple Maps was terrible. We were doing side-by-side -side comparisons, and there's a, a ton of random closures uh, in my area right now. They're doing so much construction and stuff, and like with all these storms, there were so many random road closures. Apple Maps always was beating Google Maps, and I was like, what? Really? So, crazy. I'll, I'll hand it to them. If it works, it works. Are you using the new GoPro 10? Yeah, yeah, we've been using the 10. Uh, we've been using it for, since it came out. They've made big changes to Apple Maps. They're much better now than they used to be. I'm, I'm surprised, it's great. I think there's like a couple little things that I'm not as happy about, but like the way it zooms out when you're gonna make a turn and it shows you like another turn that's coming up, Something Google Maps really doesn't ever do. Um, but yeah, the GoPro 10 from the 8, I think that is a great upgrade. We're also using it on a the HDMI transmitter, too. So there is some of that. It is a consistent 60 frames per second, where the 8, I compared them. The 8 looked a little bit... It's not as clear. So I think going from the 8 to the 10, it's a really good upgrade, especially if you use it like that. Um, but you can compare the recent streams, and you can just crank up the quality. You can see a clear difference between the two. If you leave it on like 480, it's harder to tell. Do you use Waze? Um, it's pretty common here. But I usually stick to Google Maps or Apple Maps. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end things. Don't forget, L to the inside, long side to us. <laughs> Preach it, man. <laughs> Put the GoPro back on and jump over it. No, just key it out and let me know what it looks like. I, I want to see what it's like normal. So if you just like throw it on and put some backgrounds, I'd be, I'd be really interested to see it. Alrighty. Do you have another cart? No, this is this is all for today. Alrighty, guys. I will catch you later. Um, what is today? Uh, da -da. Wednesday. I either have something. I think I got something Friday. So or like a stream planned for Friday. So I'll probably see you Friday, if not Saturday for sure. So, alrighty, dudes. I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for the super chats and making this a fun stream. Hope you enjoyed. If you guys want to check out software, uh, Film Cut, we pinned a comment. Um, so feel free to check it out. Let me know what you think. And uh, bye.